The stories go is that when the first people started encountering these Beckbaum forests and Beckbaum thickets that they could, were so thick they could walk on top of them, that they'd woven together. Massive migrations of springbuck used to come through the area, reportedly taking days to pass through some towns. Elephants and black rhino would have moved through those thickets, creating paths. Animals like kudu and eelant also were in great abundance here. Lion, leopard, African wild dog, cheetah, from deep canyons, thick forested areas, open grass plains. All of that's part of our, our dream to get back to that desired state. We're very excited to have found now five different rock art sites, which indicates this was an area that was very suitable for, for early habitation by the first peoples of South Africa, the hunter-gatherer sand. If they could stay here and survive here, then they were surviving and thriving on something. Obviously lots of, lots of game, uh, lots of variety of vegetation that they could both eat and use for medicinal purposes. Who knows what they'll still find. You farm to live, you farm to survive, you don't farm to, to thrive as such and, and to make yourself rich. Farming was a way of life rather than a way of making a living. During the frontier era, there were increasing numbers of, of, of Dutch uh, pioneer farmers moving into this area. The, the overhunting of this area uh, between 1830 and 1870, it's uh, legendary, the springbuck migrations are gone. And during the war as well, there were Blesbok and, and, and black wildebeest in particular, they were both put under severe pressure from hunting by both the British and the Boer troops. It would be nice to go back and take a few people aside and educate on, on what was going to happen. So the owner of the property, Eric Kovac, he's a Slovakian. He came out here as a, as a young lad exploring the world to do some hunting. Fell in love with the area and many years later was in South Africa again and decided to look for the area and visit it and without speaking a word of English managed to find the place where he'd been and where he'd fallen in love with grew. It was a case that there was a lot of small chopped up hunting farms and chopped up goat farms. It's, there's a line down the middle of the of the hill and on the one side is just grassland and the other side is speckworm. Eric went on to acquire neighbouring properties, specifically initially for hunting. Finding himself becoming more in touch with the land and finding himself becoming more sensitive to the environment. The vision changed from one of utilising the area for hunting and game farming to a vision of landscape level protection. In order to get to a level where we're, in, get, where we're engaged in landscape level conservation, we need to get to as large an area as possible that ecological systems can maintain themselves. Currently there are a number of blocks which are fenced separately. Once all the fences are down, we'll be looking at an area of just shy of 17,000 hectares. Among the most exciting animals being reintroduced here that was locally extinct was black rhino. We have the potential to play a significant role in the black rhino range expansion project. Elephant introduction has also been exciting. Of course the predators, lion, cheetah, animals that have been raised in zoos could potentially be rewilded through our efforts here. Now we're very fortunate in this section of the of the thick biomes and the Great Karoo that there are a lot of protected areas and there are a lot of protected environments and they're not particularly far apart from each other. Working together we can join these, these landscapes. 
here we are at Sky Lodge on the highest point in the reserve at just over 900 meters above sea level. Behind us is Addo Elephant National Park, just shy of 15 kilometers away. To set up a corridor, a conservation corridor through to there, it's, it's something that we have to aim for. Forming such a corridor could potentially reopen the routes along the Sundays River that elephants used to follow during the wet period. Can you imagine if Ellie's could, and black rhino and antelope could once again move from the Karoo to the coast? There is a dream that is actually quite feasible within our own lifetimes.